thank you once again, everyone, uh, for, for joining us uh, this morning or this afternoon, wherever you are uh, in the world. Um, so my name is Philza, and I'm the communications lead here at the UNDP Global Center Singapore. And uh, today it's my it's a really great honor to be introducing everyone that's going to be speaking later today on the Global Impact Partnership Program, uh, which is an which is a joint effort really uh, of you know so many different stakeholders to bring uh, Nordic fintech startups here to ASEAN to help them scale and uh, you know on a broader level. Uh, forward uh, the, the whole fintech scene and, and uh, in that way um, it's going to be one big part of the S uh, of achieving the SDGs and uh, it's a really big part of sustainable development here in this region and of course beyond. Um, so I'm based in Singapore and uh, oh great hello Artak I think Artak's joining us. Artak is based in uh, the, the Bangkok uh, APEC HQ for, for the UNDP. Um, and I invited him as one of our guests as well. So I think, um, let me just quickly go through the agenda for today. All right, so I hope everyone can see my screen right now. All right. Oops. Okay, so here's the agenda for today. Um, Madam Ambassador Sandra jensen landy is going to be opening uh, with a few welcome remarks. Um, and then right afterwards, we will invite uh, Thomas Jensen, Jensen sorry, from CPH FinTech, Copenhagen FinTech, and he's the CEO. And he's going to be taking us through what exactly the Global Impact Partnership Program is all about um, and uh, showing, uh, you know, interested participants how they can apply, what's in it for them, and so on. Right afterwards, um, my uh, centre director, Bradley Busetto, he's going to be sharing a few words from the UNDP um, perspective, really on, on why FinTech is such a huge uh, component of sustainable development and uh, a little bit more about our own efforts within UNDP and also more globally from the UN uh, Secretary General's Task Force on Digital Financing for Sustainable Development. He'll be sharing a bit more about what that really is. Um, and how Copenhagen FinTech and this program fits into that. Right afterwards, we have our two fantastic corporate partners, CT and DBS, and they're going to be sharing uh, the challenge statements themselves. So on the line, we have Rudy Baxter-Warman and uh, Victor Elixev. I'm so sorry if I'm mispronouncing your, your last name. Uh, and uh, finally, Mikkel Larsen uh, from DBS Bank, who is also going to be sharing a bit more from the challenge statement. So um, if we do have any questions at the end, we will get to those questions. Uh, but if not, then we'll keep this short and sweet and uh, I'll leave it to the speakers themselves uh, to uh, you know, take it away. So first and foremost, I'd really, it's a huge honor for me to invite Madam Ambassador Sandra Jensen Landy to uh, share a few words on um, the, you know, how, how she fits into the entire thing and how uh, Denmark fits into the entire thing. Please, uh, Thank you. Thank you very much, and uh, hello, everyone. Good day, good afternoon, wherever you are. Uh, thank you all for joining us today. I'm Sandra Jensen Landy, Ambassador of Denmark to Singapore. Uh, I will keep this short. There's a lineup of interesting experts that I'm sure you want to hear instead of me. But I just want to say a few words about why uh, it's so interesting for us to connect Singapore and the Nordics uh, to leverage fintech as a driver for sustainable development. So uh, just to start, simply said, um, Singapore, Denmark, and the other Nordic countries uh, are natural partners in FinTech. Small, open, highly uh, developed countries, very digitalized societies. Uh, the Nordics are some of the most uh, digital countries in Europe, and Singapore is the equivalent in Southeast Asia. There's a highly developed uh, digital banking infrastructures, there's an openness to change facilitated by a sound regulatory framework, and we act as test markets uh, for accessing the larger markets around us. So we form gateways. These are good uh, testing grounds for, for new and innovative ideas. So this sustainable fintech bridge and the global impact partnership program that we're going to hear more about today is, in my opinion, a great match in shaping a more sustainable tomorrow in the, one of the world's fastest growing regions here in Southeast Asia. And we build on, on very clear values in this work. As the rest of the Nordic countries, Denmark is a 
fully committed to the sustainable development goals. That goes in Denmark and it goes abroad. But unfortunately, there are no country in this world that is yet on track to, to, uh, to reach all the 17 goals. So we have to scale up and we have to fast track whatever uh, good initiatives we see around us, any potentials for lasting impact we need to boost. And this is what this is about. Um, FinTech can play a super important role in getting us uh, to this much more sustainable future that we are all aiming to get to. So I'm very personally very pleased to see this partnership formed. I think it's a partnership between different actors that bring strengths in their particular area. They're committed to exploring innovation for a sustainable future. So it is an example of the type of bridges that we really would like to see uh, pave the way for a new future, a greener and more sustainable one. Because when we look at pushing the needle on some of the big issues today, whether it's financial inclusion, or empowering the low income workers or banking the unbanked, or steering investments to greener sustainable investments, this is where FinTech is key. So now more than ever, this is so important. We pool all our innovation efforts. We get, get the startups involved in addressing some of the big challenges in this world. And we together pave a way for a greener and more sustainable future. New partnerships have to be formed. This is what this is all about. I am, as you can see, extremely uh, excited about this and I'm looking forward to hearing all these different speakers talk about it. So uh, please let me welcome uh, all of you and I look forward to hearing the discussion. Thank you. Thank you very much, Madam Ambassador. That was fantastic. Okay, so um, now uh, we are gonna be hitting over and handing over the microphone to Thomas from uh, Copenhagen FinTech. So thank you so much, Thomas, for joining us uh, bright and early on a Monday morning. Uh, would you like to take over, please? Sure, of course. Can you hear me? Yes. All good, all right. So welcome to, uh, to Copenhagen this morning to the uh, sustainable studio here in Copenhagen FinTech Lab. So we still have the remains from our conference that we held last week, um, where that was two days of totally taking a deep dive and a, and a zoom in on, on sustainability and, and FinTech and how FinTech can accelerate a more sustainable world. Good to see that several of the participants in this uh, in this session actually also were speakers or panelists uh, last week at, at the big conference. So, so um, yeah, my name is Thomas. I'm together with Oliver, head of startup growth here, um, and um, and just a brief introduction to Copenhagen fintech because there might be persons here on the call that that don't know what what we are or what we are doing. So. We have been um, we have been quite a number of times to Singapore to build our network in Singapore and the region. We've been to the Singapore FinTech Festival for the last four years, uh, also out of the out of the festival. Last year we brought sixty people uh, from Denmark and the Nordics to the Singapore FinTech Festival, uh, where we exhibited different FinTech solutions from the Nordics. Uh, among those, there were several uh, startups working to accelerate uh, sustainability and the, the SDGs. So last year, actually together with, uh, with, uh, with Bradley and, and City and ASEAN Development Bank, we held a fringe event where the idea of starting up an accelerator actually uh, came up. So we've been working on that quite intensively uh, over the last many months. And, uh, and luckily, we got to kick this off um, around three weeks ago. So Copenhagen FinTech is a, uh, a Copenhagen-based incubator, accelerator, and cluster organization. We work both with uh, Danish, Nordic, and international banks, such as um, DBS and Citi. Um, and we do a lot of outreach globally. Uh, but the main region that we have been very active in and the main country actually is, is Singapore and also the ASEAN. So we thought this was a really, really good uh, way to connect the Nordics and Singapore and ASEAN and bring some of the awesome stuff that is happening in the Nordics to ASEAN and also uh, bridge the ASEAN into, uh, into the Nordics. Uh, so I, I don't think I will uh, say much more. I will let Oliver go through some of the um, practicalities around our website and how to apply and, and the challenges. So I'll just share our screen here. 
Uh, hopefully, everyone in a sec can see. Yes. All right, cool. We can see. Good to be well Thank you. Great. So, hi, everybody. My name is Oliver, head of startup growth in, in Thomas' team here at Copenhagen FinTech. Uh, basically, that means that I spend my time trying to help startup within the FinTech sphere to scale their business. And that's really what this program is about. So I'm just going to run through what what is it in it for a startup to join this program really briefly. You can see all of this information at the website. You can see the URL here at the top and we can send out a link afterwards. Uh, but really what this program is about is uh, taking uh, solutions that fit one of six different problem areas that we have identified with the different partners here and then try to take these solutions into market in the region, leveraging the power of partnerships. Uh, to do so, we've tried to design a, a, quite a lean program, which adding as much value as possible in a short period. Uh, so we decided to split it into three different sprints. You can see the three sprints on the website right here. Uh, so after this whole application and selection process, which is very important to find the right group of companies that we're going to select, uh, you will participate in three different uh, sprints as a startup. The first one is called the strategy sprint which is really about revisiting your business, your value proposition, your story and, and your offering and then adjusting that to how does that fit into to this new market and partnership model that you wish to engage. Uh, we will also take a look at how do you work with the SDGs and your impact profile, uh, leveraging the UNDP and the other partners here. Uh, this sprint will take place in, in Copenhagen here in the Nordics. Uh, while the second sprint, which is the co-creation sprint, uh, is taking place in Singapore. This is really when we get together with the partners and we try to co-create, okay, here's a, here's a startup solution, here's a large um, financial institution with these problem areas, how do we make these two fit together and what might a joint offering look like? And then after that, we have one final uh, sprint back in Copenhagen where we take the startups and we say, okay, now we've prototyped this, what does the next steps look like for you? What is your go-to market strategy? How does a potential proof of concept might look like? And so on and so on. So that's the three sprints. Uh, and the people participating in these sprints is not only the startups and Copenhagen FinTech, but the great partners that you'll hear from today, as well as a few additional ones. So if you're a startup, please go into the website here, uh, go through the, these challenges to say, okay, do I have a solution that directly addresses one of these? And do I believe that I could uh, scale into this region? If you scroll down, uh, you can find the application link, which takes you to a website where you fill out some information regarding your startup. And below you can read about all the different partners and what their role is in the program. You've already, you're gonna hear from the UNDP City and DBS, so I won't explain what their role is. They can do that themselves. But we also have additional partners uh, joining the program as a, in order to help these startups scale as, uh, as well as they can, uh, such as MyInvest, SG Innovate, and Capital SG. So taking kind of the investor perspective on this, how do you fund this expansion and uh, what kind of insight might investors bring to the table? So you, you can, uh, at the bottom of the website, you can both uh, email me if you have any questions. You can also download a press release which goes into more detail around what are the challenges about and what is the story behind this, this program. Uh, I think this is about what I wanted to say here, but of course this is a program which is about partnerships and that is also what Copenhagen FinTech is about. We have uh, spent uh, quite a few years here facilitating how do you take a FinTech solution and partner it with a larger institution and scale that. So that is also our role in this program is to kind of mediate these partnership dialogues. Yeah, and I think one thing is that you can see that the challenges out here to, out here to the right. Um, and if there is a startup that doesn't completely fit the challenges, don't hold back, you know, still apply because you will still be exposed to, uh, to our partners. Uh, and it might be that there's something that, that there's probably, most probably something we don't know. And, and it might be that this is a really interesting solution that, that, that the partners want to bring to, to Singapore anyway. So don't hold back, even though you don't fit completely with the stated challenges. Yeah, and then I think uh, some of you might be wondering around timeline. Uh, so it could also be worth mentioning that uh, the deadline for applications that we initially set was here in October. 
uh, we will be stretching this for a few uh, for a few weeks uh, as we want to time the program in a good way so we can also travel to Singapore with the sprint. Uh, so you have a, f a few more weeks uh, to apply for this program as well. Yeah, I think that was uh, it from us. And then uh, I think the next speaker is uh, is Bradley from UNDP, right? Hey, uh, thank you. Thanks, Thomas. Thanks, Oliver. Um, thanks to the ambassador. Um, and thanks to uh, Denmark more broadly for being such a great uh, far-sighted partner uh, with us on this. Um, and thanks to our friends at uh, City and DBS uh, too. Um, so it's, it's great timing uh, in a num for a number of uh, reasons. Uh, we're right now in the middle of um, the 75th uh, UN General Assembly in New York. Um, and so for the first time ever, of course, um, rather unfortunately, it's, it's, a, it's all digital, um, speaking of digital finance and all digital General Assembly. Um, and just a few days before, um, General Assembly, the, the U.S. Secretary General launched um, a new report, and more importantly, a whole set of uh, recommendations around digital finance, right, and harnessing um, the power and promise of digital finance to, to drive sustainability. So that's hugely important. So, so I guess the point there is that the whole UN system, from the top to the bottom, um, is is taking this very seriously and as, as a huge potential to drive sustainability. And just a couple of words for those who um, on the line that don't know what UNDP is, is doing uh, more, maybe more broadly um, and what we're doing in Singapore. UNDP is the world's largest uh, development program and, and you know, our mandate is to, is to reduce inequalities and, and, and poverty and really drive the sustainability agenda. And we're present, present in 170 countries. In Singapore, what we're doing, um, it's, really the, it's, it's really an interesting mandate. So I'm really happy um, to, to be here um, leading it, but it's, it's the first time that the UN has ever set up a hub um, with the express purpose of, of figuring out how to leverage technology and innovation to drive sustainability around the world. So um, that's why we're so excited about the power of digital finance and, and fintech. Um, so the question I was, that was posed to me in the agenda at least was, you know, why is um, fintech transformative, especially in, in ASEAN? Um, but I mean, I think you, you, everyone on the line knows that better than I do, but, but especially in the pandemic um, can definitely help, um, uh, you know, it's our, we're already seeing we're seeing uh, governments um, using digital finance to, to pay um, their their staff and pay healthcare workers, um, and, and we're seeing you know obviously a boost in in, in in the importance of remittances, right? But but more broadly, I mean, uh, of course, it's 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 about empowering small businesses. It's, it's about uh, improving uh, transparency and accountability across public finance. Um, it's about solutions that that help drive domestic savings that, that lead to local investments. So it's a whole range of, of things, um, but, but all hugely powerful. Um, but I think more important just to explain what UNDP's role in this particular um, program is. Um, so um, our role will be, you know, really on the impact side. How do we help create more impact for, for you, for the startups? Um, how do we monitor that? How do we evaluate it? How do we make sure that continues to, to, to expand as you, as you grow, right? Um, and also, certainly, uh, it's about exposure and marketing and, and helping you get out there to, to different markets. Um, as I said, we're, we're present in, in all ASEAN countries in really big ways um, and with links to, to uh, not just the startup scenes, but also um, uh, policymakers, too. Um, so, my, my broader aim, you know, is for, for this to help, you know, like we're, we're in this to, to help identify and scale um, solutions, but, but we're also trying to help drive the creation of, of digital finance ecosystems, both like in the global north, like in places like Singapore, uh, but also um, in the global south and um, in, in, in Africa and across all the countries in, in ASEAN. Um, we've just um, started to launch a, a new program with the Monetary Authority of Singapore that help drive um, creation of digital finance ecosystems in Africa. But uh, we hope if that starts picking up speed, we can do that also in ASEAN too. So just to say that <clears throat> UNDP is your friend and your partner, and <laughs> we're here to help you uh, uh, succeed um, and in ways that the UN has not really ever done before. Um, so uh, super excited about it and um, looking forward to hearing uh, from all of you too, the rest of the day and, and over the next weeks and months. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks so much, Bradley, uh, for that.
Um, so before I, I hand off to our partner CT at DBS, I actually had a, a question right here, just for the benefit of our audience, uh, for, for Thomas and Bradley, if you'd like to jump in as well. So um, just now when you were talking about the, the different sprints, maybe what would be helpful is if you have an example of, uh, you know, what would, what would a startup expect from the minute that they apply and then all the way until the very end, like how will that journey look like? Yeah, 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 we can, uh, yeah. So just a, you know, just a few words on that. Uh, so we will be closing the applications probably in late October. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you apply until that, then we will reach out to you and let you know about whether there's any uh, real fit for a further dialogue. If there is, if we can see, okay, we think you fit within the scope, we will schedule a short uh, kind of virtual interview with you. And there will probably be two or, uh, or three of these interviews before we select the right candidates. Uh, so as a startup, uh, you will expect to write an application uh, and then in the late October, you'll get a decision whether further dialogue is needed. And then we hope to close that cohort uh, by uh, mid-November to know who's part of the program and who is not. And then if you're selected for the program, we will then schedule the free sprints and say, these are the three weeks where we need you in Copenhagen, Singapore and Copenhagen uh, and uh, that's where we hope you to engage and that, that will basically be the engagement of it. And I think based on, on the companies chosen, uh, we have a pretty good idea of the content, but I think it will also be based a bit on the dialogue with the startups, how far uh, in their journey they are, what they are looking for, um, and the six startups, you know, in what areas are they working? So we will also tailor make the content a little bit more specifically when we know the cohort. But okay. based on the themes that Oliver went through in his uh, walkthrough of the program, like the strategy, the partnership and, and the execution in the third sprint. Mm. Perfect. All right. Thank you so much, uh, Thomas and Oliver for that. Okay, so now I think it's time to go over to our oopsie to our challenge statements. Um, so we have two fantastic speakers with us today from our corporate partner, City. We have Rudy baxter Wallman, who is the country head of City Denmark, and also Victor Alexev, and he's the Asia Pacific Head of Programs and Strategic Partnerships at City Ventures. So if I could hand over to, to Rudy, please, uh, just to kick us off. Thank you, Rudy. Thank you very much. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Rudy baxter Wallman, and I'm the country head for City here in Denmark. Um, let me just say a few words and I'll hand over to Victor, but as a global partner to Copenhagen FinTech, we're very excited to be able to contribute to another innovative cross-border collaboration, particularly with our colleagues over in Singapore, who you'll be hearing from shortly. As countries around the world plan for sustainable ways to recover from COVID-19, it's very timely to move ahead with an industry-leading program like this, focusing on sustainable innovation. We believe the success of this program can be instrumental in the development of SDGs. And this is an also an area where City has a strong commitment globally, particularly with our 2025 strategy that we just set out. We're really looking forward to further boosting this collaboration between the Nordic and ASEAN markets and working together on the challenges provided for you. We're very happy to provide local insights, networking, knowledge and market access. We really know how much time and effort goes into this. So thank you all for joining and good luck to everybody applying for the program. Now over to my colleague, Victor in Singapore. Thanks Rudy. Um, hi everyone. Um, echoing on, on what Rudy said, a uh, little bit about myself. Uh, I spent about 12 years uh, as an entrepreneur, basically the, the major part of my uh, professional career uh, before joining City. Uh, so when it comes to understanding the amount of effort and uh, uh, kind of uh, thinking that goes into your work, uh, believe me, I can. Uh, and hence, this is also something that will drive the, the kind of type of support that you can receive from us uh, in the region. Um, one of the things that uh, attracted me to join uh, City, in particular in, in, in my role in City Ventures, aside from the fact that you know, I get to uh, continue uh, working with, uh, you know, disruptive and, and impactful ideas is the commitment of, of City towards uh, sustainability, 
Um, and beyond that, the fact that, that finance to a certain extent is a great driver of uh, addressing both income inequality, uh, but also it's more or less the measure of things we value as a society. And the way I look at it, uh, a lot of uh, kind of the underlying um, silver lining between the different topics or themes that are explored are exactly about that, right? How do we value, how do we measure uh, things that we currently don't really put a price on? Uh, so I'm very excited uh, both to, to support you uh, and your companies, uh, but also to see these products coming through. Uh, a little bit about City Ventures. Uh, City Ventures in general, aside from the venture investment work that we do, uh, which is what we're mostly recognized for, uh, also has uh, two other kind of verticals of engagement. One is uh, our venture building work, which is called D10X or Discover 10X where we essentially help uh, people from within city uh, to build new products and services, some of these external, some of these internal, but uh, all of them existing in the cross section of what's valuable to city and what's valuable to city's clients, basically what's aligned to our vision and mission and what is uh, useful uh, to our clients. Uh, and then the other uh, component is our uh, essentially uh, exploration arm which focuses on strategic partnerships and emerging technologies. Um, so the last two is what my focus in Asia is. Uh, I'm responsible for venture building and strategic partnerships. Uh, and hence, uh, with that, my support will be focused around how to structure your value proposition in a way that it's suitable for city and its clients, uh, but also what partners uh, in the region could be suitable uh, for you. Uh, in terms of the problem statements uh, that we're uh, interested in, one of the key problem statements that, that we're looking at is uh, essentially called uh, deep tier financing. Uh, the broad idea is that uh, for um, industry, specific industries who have multi-layered supply chain, uh, like for example, auto or uh, technology and, and many more, um, one of the things that we've noticed is that um, financing options for the second, third, and et cetera layer of, of suppliers, which are usually the smaller um, country-specific um, producers or, or manufacturers, um, the financing options for them are not uh, as good as, for example, the large recognized brands who are essentially the ultimate um, uh, brands behind the products that, that we see on the market. Uh, and with that, one of the things that we can see is, is that uh, there's a lot of uh, potential for disruption, especially uh, with, uh, you know, things, for example, like COVID, where, um, you know, countries are not symmetrically hit, industries are not symmetrically hit. Um, one of the things that we see is that um, uh, as the smaller sub-suppliers -sub face challenges financing, uh, they uh, potentially uh, risk uh, having to shut down. Uh, so the question that we want to focus on is how do we set up multi-tier supplier financing programs uh, that enable for uh, you know global funding uh, from large institutions to trickle down uh, into the local uh, small and medium-sized businesses uh, that essentially provide employment and security across the supply chains. Uh, just as a data point, uh, one of the things that uh, I think it was a uh, um, Asia Development Bank research uh, posted recently shows that 74% of the total rejections for funding are exactly in that space and predominantly for reasons such as uh, because of KYC and onboarding uh, um, weight, uh, a lot of these companies don't necessarily get access to financing um, because they're not seen as uh, like profit to risk ratio uh, um, viable. Uh, so the question is basically how large organizations like ourselves can extend support uh, to such uh, partners. Uh, and then the other one that, that we're curious about as well is in terms of um, providing ESG to SDG for wealth management. Uh, so essentially, how can we um, tag more assets in a way that they can be um, aligned to or identified at, uh, on specific um, portfolio optimization goals uh, that meet uh, ESG or SDG criteria? but are not as broad as what we see currently, for example, on uh, wealth management portfolios. 
Um, so happy to answer any questions with regards to those topics uh, and uh, looking forward to seeing your uh, innovative ideas and products. And with that, thank I'd you. like to... Thank you so much, Victor, and thank you so much, uh, Rudy, as well. Um, so before I hand off to, to Michael, um, I just thought I'd, I'd uh, ask a really quick question to the everyone from City that's, that's on the, the call right now. Um, and this is a really fascinating challenge statement, I think, uh, especially where you are, um, you know, trying to trying get a lot more, uh, the whole financing challenge is, is becoming a lot more accessible to, to small countries and you're leveling the playing field. So what do you think would be the potential if, if this were to take off and if we could really make it so much easier um, for, for companies to get access to finding, sorry, funding, sorry. Uh, if, if Rudy or, or Victor or even Anneli and Shirley would like would like to just jump in there, I think it's a really interesting um, problem statement. In terms of impact, uh, there is a lot of both supply chain stability, job security uh, that you can see uh, stemming from the ability of financing to penetrate further in the supply chain. Uh, I think the same ADB study suggests that basically 10% increase in uh, financing availability, financing availability uh, for uh, this particular segment of smaller local enterprises increases 1% uh, the employment uh, rate within uh, the target host country. So in terms of impact, there's, there's uh, strong and in terms of uh, interest, uh, we've already seen interest expressed uh, by clients. So there's of course interest in ourselves as well. Uh, the question is basically how do we provide the infrastructure uh, and the incentives uh, and this is where the challenge would be for the fintech partners essentially. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right. And last but not least, um, we are going to have our DBS partner um, and Mikkel Larsen, I believe, is already on the line. Um, Mikkel, so, uh, okay. Great, so I can see you now. <laughs> Thank you for turning on your, your camera. Um, so Mikkel, oh, hang on, let me just quickly put up my slide here. Okay, so here is the challenge statement that Mikkel is going to be talking about, and it's really about um, impact through transparency and access to data. Uh, definitely a very, very timely topic, I think, for everyone, um, especially in these very um, challenging times. So, uh, Michael, over to you. Very excited to hear. Yeah. Thank you. Well, I wanted to share with you why I'm so particularly passionate about many of the, the challenges and that has been put up this year. Um, they fit the broader theme of what I think is one of the biggest problems with getting finance to flow to those places where they create most impact, which is externalities, positively and negatively. Um, but before I do that, I just wanted to briefly mention a little bit about DBS and, and the kind of institutions we are. Um, we've been focusing on the issue of not just sustainability, but the impact that we create as a company for, for a while now. Um, of course, when you're a bank, one of the biggest impact you can make is for who you choose to bank with. And so trying to figure out what are the externalities when we lend to a certain sector is certainly not a trivial exercise. But we also try to solve some of these things. And as we heard my, my good colleagues from City talk about, we've been trying to solve them through supply chain transparency. But we've also been doing some work around other areas, such as carbon pricing and where externalities keep coming up. So it's an issue for whether you're talking about capital funding, whether you're talking about um, products coming to market from supply chains everywhere. And those are the things that we're, we're interested in in DBS. And, and the first time this really dawned on me was a, a study by TrueCost a number of years back where they looked at some of the industries that actually had the most negative uh, externalities. And the top 20 of those actually create more negative externalities than the profit that they make, which I guess is a proxy for the, the value to the world. And therefore you can see them as net contrib negative contributors to the world. And it got to get you thinking around whether we're financing the right type of people. 
And whether you come at this from a risk perspective, whether you come at this from a stakeholder or capitalism point of view, it all points to the same thing. We need to figure out how to measure these things and we need to be able to put a price on them. So many of the problem statements that we're looking at this year is trying to do elements of that. And for me, it really boils down to solving one of six problems. Either you're trying to solve for capturing of the data, it needs to exist. Either you're trying to resolve for lowering the barrier to getting this, because a lot of this is behind paywalls. Um, otherwise, you're trying to solve issues around trust. This data is not easy to understand, and there are many ways to calculate this thing. Otherwise, you're trying to solve these things around um, uh, aggregating these things and making them meaningful. Otherwise, you're trying to solve around how do you make them comparable to the rest of the world. And of course, there are issues around reporting as well. And unless you solve one or more of these issues, we're never going to get to a decent pricing of, of externalities. And that's why I'm, I'm quite passionate about solving many of the issues here today. Now, the supply chain finance was already mentioned. From ESG to SMEs is a crucial issue. But pretty much every single one of these has an element of that. So the ability to capture data, turn that into a dollar amount and report it in a sensible way, it's going to be one of the key challenges for us in the next five to 10 years. So if any of you um, are a startup who's looking into some of this, we really want to hear from you. So that's pretty much it. Thank you so much, Michael, for that. Um, and that really wraps up all of uh, our fantastic lineup of speakers. Um, we do have a little bit of time for questions. So if anyone on the call, and it doesn't have to be the one uh, our attendees watching, but just really anyone who is on the panel has questions for anybody else. Now is the time just uh, to jump in. Or you can just raise your hand like this. Uh, Bradley, it's Anneli here from City. I was just interested, you said this was the first time you and uh, did this approach. Can you elaborate a bit more on that? How you, how you think the kind of development and future, how, how, how do you hope for that it will look like? Sure. Um, I guess what I meant is that this sort of close-knit collaboration to directly accelerate and, you know, and scale um, these kinds of solutions with, with um, the private sector and sort of leading private sector actors in the space. Um, yeah, it is. I mean, I don't, I, there hasn't been as far as I know. Um, um, and so we want to do more of this. I mean, so we, we, we think that the only way to, to really move the needle more broadly on the SDGs is, of course, to, to, to um, move the needle in private capital, not, not meaning like put more money necessarily the problem, but reorient the, the, the money and, and, the, and the entrepreneurship to, into the right direction. So that's the sort of bigger picture. But, but we hope that we could, um, you know, let, let's, let's think about as this almost as a, as a first step um, in, in, in our specific program and think about how we can expand this um, in other parts of the world. So right now we're, we're connecting the Nordics with, with Singapore, but um, delighted to, to consider um, how, to, how to expand this further, especially on digital finance. Should also make mention um, that we're planning um, a broader um, kind of COVID related um, uh, accelerator program um, that would be global in nature. And we're trying to structure that now and putting that together. That's a topic for, for another day, but uh, that's an example of uh, how we want to build on this sort of thing. And we have some initial investor um, lined up for that, but, um, but we can talk about that separately. But, but we, we see this as a, you know, as this is where we can be a value add because we're kind of the guardians of the SDGs. We, therefore, we have a special role to play in um, the impact monitoring, management, measurement, um, some of the, the angles that, that Mikkel just spoke on, but, but also um, we've got innovation labs um, that I help kind of design the network for. Um, across the world now um, in 60 different countries. Um, and so those are also good kind of points for um, startups in these emerging markets, frontier markets to, to, to stop by and, and, and work with. <laughs> so, thanks. Thanks, uh, Bradley, and thanks, Anneli, for that fantastic question. Does anyone else have any other questions?
maybe just a small comment here from from us in Copenhagen. So we we of course fully acknowledge, and I think that's been a very important part of the dialogue also with with UNDP and and our other partners, that that we fully acknowledge that there's some really awesome stuff going on in in Singapore and beyond in the region, that could actually also meet some of these challenges. So if you are a startup, or have a solution that fits with the challenges and and want to get involved in the week where we are in Singapore and want to also network and, and meet our partners and, and be exposed. Uh, you're also very welcome to put your info in, in the portal and we will be in touch once we get that, uh, that week planned. So we also involve the local startup ecosystem that, that might fit uh, those challenges. So that's also been a, a very important part. Of course, if you want to come to Copenhagen, you're also very welcome to do that. That's another that's another talk, but at least get involved in in the week when we uh, when we go to Singapore and we have some of the um, uh, different events and seminars and workshops there. Uh, but so so put your info in in the um, in the application portal. Fantastic, thank you, Thomas. All right, so if there, are there any more questions, comments, or, or insights or ideas to share with everybody else? If not, I think we're just about ready to wrap things up. Uh, anybody? Okay, perfect. So um, I don't think there are any other further questions uh, from, from the attendee, uh, sorry, attendees either. But uh, what we'll do is that uh, we'll, we're gonna be sending out a follow-up email uh, to everyone that's on the on the call right now and also uh, all of our attendees with uh, explicit instructions on how to apply, um, you know, what's in it for you as a startup and some of the, the uh, scaling opportunities that you'll receive um, and the benefits of working with us, the benefits of working with CT and BBS as well. And of course, uh, for more information about each of the challenge statements, uh, it's all going to be on the, uh, the website. So um, just, just one more thing, I think Thomas mentioned it a little bit earlier, but you know, obviously as uh, the, the COVID situation is developing and we don't know when travel is gonna be um, really possible anytime soon. Of course, the, 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 the best uh, case scenario is that we get startups to do the whole Copenhagen, Singapore Copenhagen um, uh, journey and that would be the, the best way forward. So the, we will probably have to keep everyone posted as things go in terms of timelines, in terms of whether travel is going to be happening, um, or is it going to be hybrid, virtual, and, and travel towards the end of the year, maybe the start of next year even. So um, just uh, you know, watch this space, and you're definitely going to be getting more updates from us very soon. Um, so with that, I think we will be ending uh, the session a little bit early and uh, thank you so much again to everybody who has, who has uh, you know, set aside some time to speak on this uh, call. So it's, it's been recorded and uh, it will be put up online in case you'd like to uh, just double check and listen to it again um, for any of the details. So thank you once again, uh, everybody. So before we we wrap things up, uh, can everyone just turn on your your cameras if they're off? And um, I just want to get a really quick screenshot of everyone waving to the camera, everyone. So just say thank you. Because yes, that's right. Perfect. <laughs> thank you so much. All right. Perfect. Got it. Thank you once again, everybody, for, for joining. Thanks, Thomas. Uh, thanks, Magnus. Uh, thank you, Madam Ambassador, Bradley, Rudy, and everyone else. Uh, and have a fantastic afternoon and evening, uh, whichever, wherever you are in the world. Bye. Thank you. Thank everyone. you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.